This is a fairly common LED head torch on eBay and it comes, uh, it's designed for clipping onto a baseball cap or with this headband and it, it's very good I have to say, I'll show you the way it clips on shortly. So it comes with a headband that can just sort of, you hook it over this here and then you lock it in and it works very well, it's a nice big pad, it's, it's quite stiff and angleable which is also good and it's also enough elastic not to like stem the flow of blood to your brain or anything like that, like some of them. So um, the price, uh, this is one I just looked up recently on online and the key word here is um, LED uh, headlight, USB and induction. The induction is quite an important word because if you just do uh, LED headlight or rechargeable you're going to get all the bike headlights but this one uh, has the induction feature, which is unfortunately its weakest link. So it comes in this. Uh, it comes with packaging that's quite stylish in its own right. It looks like some Chinese motivational poster that could possibly say something like, you know, go fishing and enjoy the cam. I'm not actually sure what this says. Presumably something about an LED headlight, but it's quite a nice uh, bit of packaging. I quite like that image. However, the torch itself uh, works well. It, if you clip it on under the baseball cap, skip so the clips on top and the, this is pointing down it actually it, it does angle well it doesn't really get in your vision too much and you may have to just lift the hat tilt the hat back a wee bit just to keep it out your vision if you've got it down an extreme angle but other than that it's not bad and I also noticed if you wear a beanie you can actually clip it on to the beanie, this manky beanie, because it's uh, covered in work from dirt from work, so um, you can actually clip it onto a beanie using the same arrangement and it acts like a headband, so to speak, and it lets you angle it and it holds it quite snugly in place again. So um, it's, it's quite well designed from that aspect. The charger is the quite seemingly quite common. It's this little plastic housing with a circuit board in it. It's got a few components in an LED. I think they're mainly, I don't know if they're for limiting current or just for resistance. We'll take a look in that afterwards, uh, just to detect that with a resistance there to um, control the LED because it's got the two colour type LED and it's got the little jack plug that goes in the side. And these, I suppose these little plastic housings are quite a good idea because the little LED torches you get, the little LED lights that plug into a USB port are quite a thick material. But this stuff is just a standard thickness and it goes into this little housing that just makes up the extra thickness. But there is a downside to this light and it's the induction feature. You see, when you turn it on, it turns on, reasonable enough. But a little green light also goes on inside and it starts beaming out infrared. I'm not sure, hold on. And I've just turned it off. Let's see, is it going to show the infrared? No, it's filtering out quite well. Hmm. But the idea is that once you put it on, you just wave your hand in front of it to turn it on and off. And you think, that's quite neat. Until you, you're you working on a detailed circuit board like this. You know, you've got a little uh, shiny circuit board to work on. And then you suddenly find that just actually the very act of working on the circuit board with its shiny surface means that it turns off and uh, then it will turn on again. I'm just trying to get the angle right here that it does it. When, you, when you're pointing it directly at where you're working, uh, it does this sort of turn on, turn off thing, even from quite a modest distance, which uh, it's not actually doing it right now, just, just for the video. But uh, any bright object, even uh, a bit of paper you're working with or anything light at all will falsely trigger it. Uh, and it, it gets annoying because, you know, even if someone is in the vicinity and they've got a, uh, if they've got a work jacket that has that reflective tape on it, then as soon as, a, as soon as you look anywhere in their direction, it's going to turn the light on and off. It, repeatedly, it goes, it's almost like it's scanning the barcode of the, of the reflective tapes and the clothing. And, you know, even if they're a couple of metres, you know, maybe about six to eight feet away, it will just continually trigger it because it's really sensitive to shiny surfaces or reflective surfaces. So um, that kind of lets it down a bit uh, and makes it kind of unusable in the sense uh, maybe it's okay for fishing. I'm not sure what you'd look at. I, I would have thought you'd be looking at things like hooks and reflective metal fish and stuff like that. So uh, I was wondering if there's a way to disable that function. So let's open it up and take a look inside. And that means we can also check what size of battery there is inside it as well. 
So it's got four screws underneath. It feels modestly heavy. Looking in the end, you can see the three LEDs, plus you can see a dark sensor, which is probably the receiver, and a, what looks like a clear LED, which is probably an infrared emitter. The cell inside is surprisingly big, actually. That's very big, isn't it? I wonder what it's actually rated at. I may have to discharge this and then charge it fully and see what capacity I get. How's that secured? Is it secured in it? Oh no, it just goes on like that. Okay, inside we have the white LEDs. We've got quite a few discrete components in here. I'm not seeing anything major to do with charging unless this has a protective circuitry in it, which it may well do. I shall check that out afterwards as well. Um, it's got this little chip. What does the chip say? Does it say anything? Is it going to be one of these anonymous little... Yeah, it's not got text on it. That's that's so common with these little chips. It's, it's the generic 8-pin chip that is most likely a little microcontroller that's just been arranged for this particular application. Uh, so, I want to disable that feature and the only way I can think of really doing that easily is just cutting off the infrared LED. Is that going to be a bad idea? So, there's heat shrink sleeve over it. So this LED in here is the infrared one, so let's just cut it off right now. And now when you turn it on, along with the little green LED, I wondered where that was going to be, because I could see a green glow up the end. Now when you turn it on, yeah, that's that looks like it. You know, I suppose ultimately if there was a source of infrared, uh, modulated infrared, you'd probably have to either black that across. And that, actually, that's another thing you could have done, but I suppose by removing the infrared LED, uh, I've kind of... Um, what, how did I manage to trigger that? Oh, it's actually me triggering it just by touching the thing. Is that the receiver? I don't think that is the receiver. I think it's just detecting the slight modulation of, you know, me touching it and adding a sort of stray input. But, um, I suppose the other option is you could have put a wee cap over this infrared receiver. You could have just blocked up the end of it. Let's uh, cut and take the sleeving off that. It's got the heat shrink sleeving just to block the interference from the sensor at the side. Yeah, that's the wee, that's a three pin sensor. So it's obviously, it's like a, a remote control receiver. It's going to have like power, uh, like positive, negative, and then signal the signal out, the demodulated signal. Um, so um, yeah, so now I've done that, that should theoretically make that a much more useful head torch. The other temptation is to change these LEDs for warm white, but that's maybe just going a wee bit too far. But, um, yeah, it's, it looks like it's got a fairly decent battery. I, I wonder what the quiescent current is when it's not running. I suppose I can also find that out by desoldering that now. So I'm just going to do that right now, in fact. Well, now I've had a thorough play. I've not managed to fully charge capacity core battery right up to its full capacity yet, but I have had all the covers off, and the, there's a couple of things to note. The battery does not have protective circuitry in it. I peeled the covers off. I wanted to check some other things. I wanted to check why... The negative terminal is red and the positive terminal is black. It's just one of these things. Also, that cable's been nipped quite tightly in there, possibly against the plastic casing. Uh, I've put heat shrink back over the, the cell, but uh, obviously it's not going to be... It's a really tight fit. You know, I'm going to have to maybe cut some of that back off because this battery is held in place. This lithium cell is held in place quite snugly by proper retaining mechanism and uh, this uh, spacer here. So that that's quite a good aspect of it. The charge protection then is on this little circuit board, and now I see it, I'm reading the embossed text here. It says 5 volts in, obviously because it's uh, USB, and it says 4.2 volt, 500 milliamps. It certainly does put out bang on 4.2 volts, well 4.21, but that's close enough. And the current uh, I, I found it was charging the cell at was typically around about 200 milliamp, which is fine. You know, that's okay, it's not the 500 milliamp it says on it, but slower charging is better, so that's pretty good. The running current of this is 59 milliamps when it's running, and if you consider, that's say 60 milliamps, for three LEDs it's going to be 20 milliamps per LED. That's fine, the LEDs are not being pushed too hard, so that's good. When you turn it off, um, 
it goes down initially to a standby mode where for a few seconds where it draws one milliamp and then it cuts way down to something like 27 microamps. So battery life in standby mode is, you know, this thing really is being, it's being programmed correctly to shut down to a real low level. Um, is there anything more to say? Yes, uh, there is something else to say. Don't take this to bits because it's glued shut and will burst when you take it to bits, all the wee pins come off. I think it's glued shut. I heard that or it's just really tight friction because, uh, yeah, it, it's burst now, but that's okay. I can glue it back together if I want. So based on, I'm not sure what capacity of this cell is, would we say 500 milliamp? Would we say 500 milliamp power maybe? Or maybe really push it to about somewhere between, say, 500 milliamp and 1 amp hour. I'm going to have to do a test on that. I'm going to actually have to use the... Um, the little uh, Matec analyzer, perhaps, and run that down to the bottom. I'm not sure how it, how it detects when it's reached the lower voltage, if there's no protective circuitry here. I'm not sure if it's got detection built into the chip to detect the lower voltage. Um, some of the little PIC-12 type microcontrollers have uh, voltage threshold detection. But um, I would say running at 60 milliamps, if we, if we just took a rough value 600 milliamp hour, you're going to get about 10 hours continuous off this in a full charge, and then it's only going to take about, um, well, let's see, three or four hours to fully charge back up again from a USB uh, power supply. So now that that uh, annoying feature has been cut out with the infrared LED being cut out, it's actually quite usable. So um, yes, it is, it's quite nicely made. It's got a good functional clip. One of the better clips, it seems quite stiff when you move it, which is good as well. It's going to hold its position. I'm not sure how well that will last over time. But um, yeah, it, it seems, you know, once that little tweak has been made, it, it seems fairly functional little unit.